morning guys, Joe Burke from CSC Motorcycles. I'm here today to talk to you about the new CSC 250 Cafe Racer. I just came in from doing 60 miles up in the mountains with uh, this motorcycle and uh, I want to tell you it was a real hoot. And uh, it's a it's a rip-roaring little motorcycle. I just uh, did a GPS indicated 72 miles an hour on the freeway coming home on it. Uh, that, that may change when we uh, get the production bikes in. All right, here's the here. 6800 RPM, 72 miles an hour on the GPS. But let me familiarize you with uh, what this bike is all about. Zongshan told us they came out with a new model, I believe it was a 150. Uh, it's this exact same motorcycle. We saw it and we said, you know, that's a beautiful motorcycle, but 150 just doesn't sell in the U.S. So we asked them, could you put the 250 engine in, the same one we use in the TT250. It's a Honda CG engine. It's not made by Honda. It's originally designed by Honda. I'll tell you more about that in a second, too. And Zhang Chen, the wizards there, took a look at it, and that's what they did. And uh, we've got two prototypes in that uh, the company shipped into us uh, uh, several weeks ago. Uh, I took a very short ride on one, and uh, my good buddy Jerry did a video of that uh, that I put online. And, generated a lot of excitement. The phones have been ringing off the hook here with people asking, uh, I want to buy it. Where do I make my deposit? What do I need to do? Well, we're not taking deposits yet. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. But the uh, exciting thing about this bike is, uh, well, everything's exciting about it. Let me, let me tell you a tiny bit uh, about this guy. It's uh, got an oversized engine and a super lightweight frame. Uh, this thing is just uh, uh, an amazing bit of performance for a 250. And here we go. We got two of these in to play around with. And um, hey, I'm the guy that gets to play around with them, and uh, I just, well, I, I, I had a lot of fun on this bike. Uh, I'll start at the bottom and uh, work up, starting at the front and work backwards. The bike's got 17-inch um, wheels, front and rear. It's got aluminum ribs. That's a big deal because when you accelerate, uh, when you accelerate on a motorcycle or in a car or anything for that matter, you're not only pushing the mass of the vehicle forward, you've also got to uh, accelerate the wheels rotationally. And if it's aluminum, if the wheels are aluminum, they're a lot lighter than they are if they're made out of steel. It makes a tremendous difference in how a motorcycle uh, handles, how it feels, how it accelerates. Aluminum rims on this bike, front and rear, 17-inch wheels, front and rear. It's got a really cool rib tire pattern. I don't know if you can see it in a video here, but I'll show it to you in a bit uh, when I uh, do some close-ups on a bike. Motorcycle has a disc brake in the front, hydraulic disc brake in the front, and it's got a, uh, a mechanically actuated uh, drum brake in the rear. Now, uh, what I'm sure we're going to hear, and you can send your emails to us if you like, you know, that's fine. We're, not, we're, we're always interested in what our customers think. Uh, but I'm going to tell you on this one, we, we anticipate we're going to get a lot of people that tell us, oh, I need a, a disc brake in the back. Okay, if you need a disc brake in the back, this is not the motorcycle for you. This motorcycle is going to have a drum brake. One of the reasons it's going to have a drum brake is one of the things we're doing to keep the cost of this motorcycle low. Can't tell you what the price is yet, but when we do announce what the price is, you're going to be shocked. This is going to be uh, affordable is not quite the right word. It's going to be surprisingly low priced. Now, on this issue of a drum versus a disc brake, uh, forget everything you've read. Go ride a motorcycle and, and see what you find out. As I mentioned, I just spent 60 miles up in the mountains on this thing. I couldn't get the drum to fade, and I had all the braking power I needed. Um, Say, so yeah, but a, a disc won't fade and a drum will. Uh, well, I tell you, I, I've faded disc brakes on motorcycles, including uh, when I rode an RX-3 in the Andes Mountains. You ride a disc brake long enough and you're going to get it to fade too. Drum brake is just fine. It worked just well. One of the reasons it works so well is this motorcycle is so light. It was designed to be a 150. Basically, uh, we did the same thing here in a sense that Carol Shelby did. Uh, with the uh, Cobra back in the day. He took a Ford V8 and put it in a little British sports car. We took a 250 engine and put it in a motorcycle that was designed for a 150. And the effect of that is just, you, you have to ride it. And you're going to see a video in a little bit that shows some of the riding I did on it. This, this bike jumps. It's a, it's a real fun motorcycle. 
It's got a really dynamic looking exhaust pipe and it's got a tremendous exhaust note to it. You'll hear that when I'm riding around in the video uh, as well. Uh, it looks great. It's got the classic megaphone styling. Uh, it's not treated to prevent discoloration, and I like that. That's a classic look that uh, Triumph Twins in the 60s and other motorcycles had. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed that look a lot. So uh, what else we got on here? We've got a cool seat, very comfortable. Uh, having just spent some time on it, I can tell you, the motorcycle has both electric and kickstart. It's got a kickstarter right here and an electric start in a conventional position right here. I mentioned it has the Honda CG engine. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about that. This engine was originally designed by Honda, not for the Japanese market, not for the U.S. market. It was designed for the South American market because when they were selling motorcycles in Japan, they found that, or, or made in Japan, in South America, uh, what Honda found out is uh, motorcycles were not being maintained the way they would have been uh, in other places where Honda sold and uh, they were having some issues with engines uh, failing because they hadn't been properly maintained. So Honda said, hey, we have to design an engine that basically will survive uh, uh, not being well maintained. That's what started the Honda CG engine uh, approach. Uh, Honda made that engine for a number of years. It did very well in Brazil and other South American markets where the motorcycles were not meticulously maintained. Honda's patent ran out. Honda stopped making the engine. They went on to other designs. And uh, I'm going to guess at least a dozen other companies started making what are commonly called Honda clone engines, or it's an engine based on the original Honda CG design. Uh, this is one of them. Zhang Shen makes this in uh, displacements running from, I believe, a 125 up to a 250. We say 250, actually it's 229 before anybody gets their shorts in a knot over that. That's common practice in the motorcycle industry. They always round up. They never round down. So it's actually a 229 cc engine, just as the CC uh, TT 250 is. Uh, what's different about this engine, uh, and it, it may be, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I believe Zhang Shen is the only manufacturer of a CG clone engine that puts a counterbalancer in it. If you guys know otherwise, hey, I, I never claim to be the smartest kid in the room. Maybe possible that somebody else is doing it. Send me a note, let me know, and then, then I'll be smarter the next time I talk about this. But this engine has a counterbalancer, and it's uh, extremely smooth. It's a, it's a fun ride. Uh, it's a five-speed transmission. It's a carbureted engine, no fuel injection, which means the fuel tank doesn't have to be pressurized. Again, that makes it easier to maintain if you're in an area where you get dirt near fuel or something of that nature. It's a trivial matter to... Uh, clean the carb, open it up. Uh, when we start selling these, we'll have complete maintenance tutorials online, just as we do with all of our other motorcycles, so you'll be able to uh, take care of your own motorcycle. Uh, it's got really cool clip-on bars. Well, I, I call them clip-on. Actually, that's not the correct term. They're uh, low-profile cafe racer type bars. Let me sit on this uh, so you can get a feel for what it looks like. Uh, people are going to ask, uh, you know, hey, how, how tall are you? I'm 5'10", I weigh 180 pounds. I know, I'm probably about 10 pounds overweight, maybe a little more. Uh, and I, I fit on this pretty well. It works right for me. I like the seating position. It's not as radical as the RC3. It's not an all-out sports bike. Uh, but it's comfortable. When you're on the freeway or riding around in the mountains, this feels like a really natural, right seating position. Rear-view mirrors work real well. They'll ratchet. These things will rotate up or down this way, and then when you get it where you want it, you can twist the mirrors around to whatever you feel you need. Uh, good visibility to the rear. It's got a really cool instrument cluster, dash cluster. I'll show you that when we get to the close-ups. Let's see, what else did I want to mention from the uh, from this side of the motorcycle? Maybe that's everything. It's got passenger foot pegs. That's a you know, pre pretty much everybody has those. But yeah, you can take a passenger on this, and it's set up to seat uh, another passenger. All right, let me. Uh, take the camera off here and I'm gonna get a little closer to this bike and show you some other neat features here uh, first thing let's see I'll come around to this side first thing that's pretty cool is the uh, let me see I'm gonna get this in focus for a second there, okay there we go okay first thing is the disc brake up front uh, that dynamite tire pattern I told you about is kind of a classy looking uh, I'd say early uh, British cafe racer type of look for the tire tread pattern, but they're DOT approved tires. They're uh, brand new. Uh, it's got the same pattern front and rear. As I mentioned before, it's a 110, 70, 17 in front and a 130, 70, 17 in the back. It's got four gators on it. Again, that's a classic look, pretty cool. Single headlight, uh, 
Let's come around and look at the dash cluster here. Let me get this guy in focus. There we go, that's great. Uh, it's got a fuel gauge on the left. Uh, it's got a tachometer, a little tachometer. It's kind of cute on the right, and it's got a speedometer right in the middle. Uh, this one's calibrated in uh, kilometers, but the uh, ones that we bring in will be, of course, in miles, and the odometer will be in miles as well. We'll make sure we get that right. Uh, it's got some uh, nice hardware on the triple T's and the uh, uh, the handlebar mounts and the uh, it's got turn signal indicators right here uh, the control layouts conventional just what you get uh, on any motorcycle it's got a kill switch starter buttons right below uh, it's got bar end weights uh, uh, which are kind of a classy feature hydraulic front disc brake coming over here I've got uh, my turn signals there's a horn uh, underneath it's got, sounds the same as a TT250 horn it's probably the same item high beam low beam and that yellow button on front is the uh, flasher uh, on the bikes that we bring in uh, you don't see it on this guy but we will have the um, off A1 A2 and we'll have our um, get that in focus again we'll have our uh, two accessory outlets underneath the seat just as we do on uh, all of our other motorcycles let me drop down here and show you what's going on here that's this is the CG engine in this motorcycle you can see the counterbalancer that's this guy right here uh, gear shift is on the uh, left side traditional motorcycle layout one down four up oh I guess uh, what I didn't mention on the instrument panels it's also got a real cool gear indicator in the middle as well as a separate neutral indicator uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, this bike will have our 300 watt alternator. What you're seeing uh, right in the center of the picture now is where the alternator will reside. All of our motorcycles have a higher output uh, alternator so you can hang all the accessories on them that you would like. We've got a side stand. This bike's on the side stand now. Also has a center stand. You can see right here. Uh, gearing on this bike is uh, what we're playing around with right now. It comes with a 13 tooth sprocket on the front. Uh, uh, the one that I took out for a ride, we'd gone up to a 17-tooth sprocket. 17 tooth sprocket. Uh, I believe it's geared a little too tall at that point. I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, we, we may tweak that a little bit. We'll see uh, what we settle on uh, uh, in the final configuration. It's got an LED tail light. That's real cool. Turn signals, of course. Let's see if I missed anything here. It's got little piggyback reservoirs on the shock absorbers. They're, they're pretty cool looking, I think. Uh, I already mentioned that dynamite uh, exhaust system. That's beautiful. And here's the um, right side of the CG engine. Uh, again, you can see the counterbalancer at the front. Uh, got an oil uh, sight gauge on it down at the lower bottom. Uh, it's got uh, a fill stick just behind a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter, oh, it's this guy right here. Uh, let's see what else. Carbureted engine, I already mentioned that. Oh, you can see the valve cover. That's That's one of the really cool features on this that's the thing above the fins uh, that that'll come off in seconds and uh, that gives you full access to adjust your valves and it's threaded adjusters on a valve real easy to operate uh, no no problem adjusting your valves uh, valve jobs on these bikes will probably be a 10 to 15 minute affair let me think what else I already mentioned the passenger pegs Did you see right here uh, you see the tread pattern on a rear, pat rear tire matches the front kind of cool uh, color uh, We haven't finalized the color selections yet. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of matte black I always thought that was too much of a I don't know millennial thing whatever you want to call it But you know riding this thing around I, I'll tell you that works that blacked out bike really works for me uh, The deal with the eight that's something from Zhang Shen. I don't know if we'll keep that or not Maybe we'll go one better and put a nine in there. Who, who knows? Uh, it's got uh, graphics they put on. It's all preliminary. It says CSC 250 CR. You can see right there. Uh, we may stick with that or we may change it. Uh, if you've got ideas on colors or uh, design motif for this, hey, send them in to us. We'd love to hear them. Uh, uh, a lot of times uh, when we bring in early bikes uh, like this, our customers will have suggestions for us, and we incorporate those when, where we think it makes sense to do so. Uh, let me think what else I've got here. Uh, I mentioned the horn, sounds just like the one on the TT250. Mentioned the single headlight, um, that's kind of cool. Uh, really, so, uh, I guess I, I got to do my signature. This is Joe Burke from CSC Motorcycles, and I'm out. I'm going to try something a little bit different here. Let's see if I can work this right, get a little closer. Oh, this, oh yeah, this is going to work just fine. Let's see if I can get myself in focus. Oh, there we go. So I'll move the camera out of the way, about like so, and I'll say, hey guys. This is Joe Burke from CSC Motorcycles, and I'm out.